In the next several videos, we'll continue to explore functions and we'll consider some things that are useful but not particularly critical in terms of implementing functions or writing programs. But we'll also discuss some things that are very important for you to understand as you go forward. But let's start with something that isn't particularly critical. Let's talk about what are known as doc strings and we'll see how they work with the help function to give us some documentation and information about functions that we write. First of all, let's say help tell me what you know about the function that's called feet to meters. Well, it turns out this isn't a built-in function and we haven't written any function called feet to meters. So, we get an error message. Now, let's define that function. Let's say the function feet to meters takes an argument that we'll call ft and all this does is return 0 0.3048 times this argument ft and that's it. That's the entire function. Let's call it feet to meters with an argument let's say of 3 feet and we see that's equivalent to 0 0.9144 meters and we'll ignore that trailing one. And now, how about if we say, help, what do you know about the feet to meters function? Well, we get a bit more information now. That first line isn't telling us a whole lot. It says, help on function feet to meters in module underscore underscore main underscore underscore. Okay, so no useful information there. The next bit of text tells us what we wrote when we defined the function in the header statement. So it throws out the def keyword, the trailing colon, and it shows us the rest. At least this is showing us that the argument is called ft, and that provides us the clue that it's probably feet that we're passing into this function. But there's something that we can do to help document our function and also provide more information for the help function. What we do is we add something that's called a doc string to our function. And this is something that appears as the first expression in the body of the function. Let's define a new version of feet to meters. And if we use the same identifier as before, the old definition will be lost and we'll just have this new definition that we're entering now. The first statement or the first expression in the body of the function will be a string literal. This is the doc string now and we'll start it with three quotation marks or a quotation mark repeated three times and we will say that this function will return the number of meters equivalent to ft feet and then we'll terminate this with a quotation mark repeated three times and then this is followed by the same return statement as we had before, 0 0.3048 times ft. The function is now defined and let's call it feet to meters. Let's give it the same argument we had before, 3 feet. And hitting return, we see that this returns 0 0.9144 meters. That string that was embedded in the function didn't affect the execution at all. So what is that string good for? Well now if we say help tell us what you know about the feet to meters function not only do we get that header information but we also get that doc string that's telling us this function will return the number of meters equivalent to ft feet and uh, just before that we see that in the header the sole argument, the sole parameter, the only parameter this function takes is called ft. Now by convention we enclose doc strings in a quotation mark repeated three times even if it appears on a single line and also the statement that appears in a doc string by convention we try and be prescriptive. We try to state what the function does in the form of a command, return the number of meters rather than being descriptive, but that's not a big deal. 
The other thing that's nice about doc strings is that simply when reading the code itself, when you are looking at the statements associated with the function, you can see that statement right there that's describing what the function does. So including these doc strings is a good habit and one that you should form early in your own coding practices.